Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video we are going to learn about modulation and need for modulation. So what is modulation? So modulation is defined as the process of frequency translation. So modulation is defined as the process of frequency translation or Modulation is defined as the process in which the frequency of message signal is shifted from a low frequency region to high frequency region or so modulation is defined as the process in which the characteristics of the carrier is varied in accordance with the message signal in accordance with the message signal so these are the definitions of modulation so modulation is defined as the process of frequency translation that is frequency shifting that is shifting from a low frequency region to high frequency region or uh, the characteristics of the carrier is varied in accordance with the message signal so this will serve as the main definition of modulation so the input to the modulation or modulator circuit the circuit which performs the process of modulation is called as modulator so the input will be the message signal uh, m of t and the output is the signal which is called as modulated signal so the input to the process of modulation so the input to the process of modulation is called as message signal this message signal is also called as information signal or since it is being modulated that is it is given as input to the modulator since it is being modulated so it is called as modulating signal or it is sometimes referred as weak frequency signal so all these are synonyms of the signal which is called as message signal so generally we will represent it with m of t so the output of the modulation so for performing the process of modulation we are using a high frequency signal which is called as carrier signal ac cos of 2 pi fct is used as the carrier where ac represents the amplitude of the carrier and fc represents the frequency of the carrier therefore so this is a high frequency signal or this is called as carrier signal generally throughout the video series will represent it with c of t c of t is equal to ac cos 2 pi fct is the carrier which is used so by using this mod message signal and carrier signal we are going to convert that as s of t which is called as modulated signal the output of the process of modulation is called as modulated signal the output of the signal output of modulation is called as modulated signal so next is why modulation is required that is need for modulation so why modulation is required first is for designing practical antennas so for designing of practicality of antennas we are going for modulation the minimum height of antenna for satisfactory reception and transmission of signals is lambda by 4 but the wavelength lambda is given by 
c by f where c represents the velocity of light which is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second and f is the frequency of the signal being transmitted that is frequency of the message frequency of m of t so h minimum is equal to c by 4f because lambda is equal to c by f so it is c by 4f suppose if the frequency is of very low frequency is uh, consider it as 3 kilohertz so the height of antenna required is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 divided by 4 into 3 into 10 to the power of 3 which is around 25 kilometers so the height of antenna required in this case where the frequency of the message signal is 3 kilohertz if you transmit directly without the process of modulation then the height of the antenna required is 25 kilometers and design of such antenna of that height is impracticable so if you increase the frequency by using the process of modulation and using the carrier signal if you increase the frequency of the message signal that is the output signal which is a modulated signal to suppose 3 megahertz if you increase the frequency from 3 kilohertz to 3 megahertz then the height of antenna required is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 by 4 into 3 into 10 to the power of 6 which is around 25 meters so design of such antenna of that height is easy so we can design the antennas of practice or that is practical antennas can be designed if you increase the frequency of the message signal from a low frequency region to high frequency region which is called as modulation so that is the reason that is the main reason why modulation is required in all the communication systems second is to reduce the effect of noise to reduce the effect of noise also we are going for modulation that we will discuss later how noise can be reduced so third is mod multiplexing of signals multiplexing of signals so multiplexing is the process of simultaneous transmission simultaneous transmission of message signals through same channel that means many message signals of same type are transmitted using the same modulator or same channel by using the process of modulation so if this is your channel and this is your receiver circuit so the two message signals m1 of t and m2 of t which are having same frequencies can be transmitted through the same channel by varying the fre carrier frequencies ac cos 2 pi fc1 of t is related to m1 of t and similarly ac cos 2 pi fc2 of t is related to m2 of t so by using two different carrier signals which can be generated by local uh, oscillators so these message signals are, which are having the same frequency is being transmitted using the same channel for example the cable wire which we are having the tv transmission cable wire so a single cable wire is used to transmit all the video signals of different channels through the same channel that is the same cable wire we are going to transmit so this is possible because different carrier frequencies are used because the video signals which are here is same but different carrier frequencies are used in order to get the different frequencies at the output so that all the signals can be transmitted through the same cable wire so that is the example of multiplexing and this process of multiplexing is possible using only modulation so using modulation only this process of multiplexing is also possible so for all these purposes for all these three purpose we are going for modulation okay so next is demodulation 
so demodulation is the reverse process the reverse process of modulation so generally the input to the demodulated circuit is the modulated signal and the output of this demodulation will be the original message signal m of t so demodulation is generally the reverse process of modulation so input is modulated signal and the output is message signal so this is about demodulation so next is the basics of fourier transform is required in order to have the analysis in analog communication so what is fourier transform fourier transform is is used to convert a time domain signal into a frequency domain signal so fourier transform is used to find the frequencies present in a signal so the find the frequencies present in a signal so in order to find the frequencies we are going for fourier transform so we need fourier transform of the carrier signal its representation is ac cos 2 pi fct its fourier transform is given by ac by 2 into del of f minus fc plus del of f plus fc so this is the fourier transform of cos signal so cos signal its fourier transform is impulse function it is represented like this so where we are going to represent so if you take this as c of t then its corresponding fourier transform is c of f so if you draw c of f so there are two impulses here one is at fc and the other is at minus fc so minus fc and plus fc their amplitudes amplitude is ac by 2 so the amplitudes here is ac by 2 so the fourier transform of the carrier signal ac cos 2 pi fc because we are using this in the upcoming classes so this is just as a revision for fourier transform so ac cos 2 pi fct its fourier transform is given by ac by 2 del of f minus fc plus del of f plus fc so there are two impulses one at fc and other at minus fc with amplitudes ac by 2 and the second thing which we require is modulation property modulation property or we'll call this as frequency shifting property because we are using the process of modulation that is we are shifting the frequency so this property is useful in uh, all in analyzing this communication systems so modulation property or frequency shifting property of fourier transform it states that if the message signal m of t its fourier transform is m of f then m of t multiplied by ac cos 2 pi fct that is the carrier signal so the resultant of the multiplication of message signal and carrier signal is called as modulated signal so its fourier transform is given by ac by 2 into m of f minus fc plus m of f plus fc that is the message signal which is initially at 0 that is m of f minus 0 so this m of f can be written as f minus 0 so the initial the center frequency the center frequency of m of f which is initially at 0 is now shifted to the frequency fc and the frequency minus fc that is it is shifting from a low frequency region to a high frequency region that is because fc is the carrier frequency which is of very high value so it now it is shifting from a low frequency region to high frequency region which is called as modulation which is called as the property of modulation so this property is called as modulation property and shift and since there is shifting in frequency of the message spectrum from a from 0 to fc so this property is called as frequency shifting property so how we can shift the property and how 
the message spectrum looks like we'll discuss in the upcoming classes so next is the types of modulation or types of modulation in analog communication so types of modulations in analog communication so generally the signal which we use in the message signal which we use in analog communication is of continuous type is of continuous type because analog signal is also called as continuous signal so the other name for analog signal is continuous signal so the message signal which we use in all this analog communication is of continuous type that is continuous signals we are going to use the general form or general representation of any continuous time signal is ac cos of 2 pi fct plus phi so the carrier signal which we use is also continuous in type where you have ac uh, where you represent it in standard form as ac cos of 2 pi fct plus phi where ac represents the amplitude of the carrier fc represents the frequency of the carrier and phi represents the phase of the carrier so there are three characteristics of the carrier signal c of t so if you remember in the definition of modulation we have read that the third definition we we have read that the characteristics of the carrier is varied in accordance with amplitude of message signal so characteristics of the carrier is varied in accordance with the amplitude of message signal so this characteristics is characteristics of the carrier is of three types so amplitude frequency and phase therefore there are three types of communication in analog communication there are three types of modulations so sorry so there are three types of modulations in analog communications one is amplitude modulation amplitude modulation so if the amplitude of the carrier is varied in accordance with the message signal then that type of amp modulation is called as amplitude modulation if and the second is frequency modulation frequency modulation so if the frequency of the carrier is varied in accordance with the message signal then that type of modulation is called as frequency modulation so the second characteristic here is frequency so frequency of c of t that is carrier signal is varied in accordance with the amplitude of message signal then that process is called as frequency modulation if the amplitude of the carrier signal is varied in accordance with the amplitude of the message signal then that process is called as amplitude modulation and the third is phase modulation phase modulation so if the phase of the carrier is varied in accordance with the message signal then that type of modulation is called as phase modulation that is the phase of the c of t is varied in accordance with the amplitude of m of t then that type of modulation is called as phase modulation okay so there are three types of modulations in analog communication and now in the upcoming classes we are going to learn about each and every type of modulation their modulation types demodulation types and different types of uh, different characteristics in the upcoming classes so in the next class we'll start with amplitude modulation so if you are first time to my channel please consider subscribing thank you